TLO, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are live. By the time you see this, we won't be, man. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Uh, right above me, if we do go live and you miss it, highlight to the live. Probably not, because you could just go to Twitch and replay the whole stream. So, why would I? But, but it's there. Uh, don't forget, we do got Patreon. This is a list of everything that's almost on there. We got three new shows about to start. We got to get to voting, man. Don't forget, we got merch. And uh, let's get to this, man. This is Ro Rudy Loves Hoops. Never heard of him. But that's cool, man. Let's get into it, though. This is the harsh truth about British basketball. Now, hold on. Before we even make a move left, right, forward, back, up, down, are there any British hoopers in the NBA? Do y'all have a national basketball team? Is it good? I've never heard anything about anybody playing basketball from the UK. So this got no choice but to be hilarious. That's what I'm thinking. Like, y'all don't really hoop out there. Y'all be playing football and rugby and cricket. Like, y'all don't really be, you know what I'm saying? Plays for the Raptors. So it's one? In 1999, the British Basketball League was the potential front runner for becoming a European powerhouse, having sponsors like Peugeot, Budweiser, and Playboy. With over 11,000 fans in attendance, that year, the Manchester Giants would host the Sheffield Sharks. <laughs> the Manchester Giants versus the Sheffield Sharks? That's, that's funny. Okay. BBL final. Coaching the Sharks was current NBA head coach Chris Finch of the Minnesota Timberwolves. Oh, okay. And coaching the Manchester Giants was Nick Nurse. Current Nick head Nurse, coach wow, the okay. Sixers, former NBA champion, okay. former coach of the year, and former all-star head coach. All right. Many have described that year for being the pinnacle of British basketball. The Giants would go on to win, and following that year, the league would reach a 22 million pound deal with the prestigious NTL TV network. Exactly what the league needed to solidify itself at the top spot. But, okay, y'all got a league where they secured a $22 million league. That sounds like a bad investment because don't y'all got to pay like a TV tax? And ain't nobody really watching British basketball. Back in these days, the 90s, football was at an all-time great level. Steve Nash is from the UK. No, he's not. He's from Australia, isn't he? OG Ananobi is like, where is he? He's not from the UK, is he? Then two years later, NTL would file for bankruptcy. Mmm. Mmm. Finesse, y'all. My name is Rotany. I love basketball. I love to talk basketball. And I hope one day you can share that same love for basketball as I. Here we have a list of all the All-Stars since 2010 who aren't American. And here are a list of those that are British. Lou Dang. Luau Dang. Didn't know that. Got that right. Lou Dang, two-time NBA All-Star and an all-defensive second team member, is the most successful British basketball player, making him the UK's basketball GOAT. Now, we can talk about Lou Dang and how he was once the UK's richest sportsman. Finessing his way to a bag. But that is a completely different video. He, did, he really did finesse the Bulls. Bro was getting paid for like 10 years after. You would think having a two-time NBA All-Star, the UK basketball scene would be popular. And you aren't wrong. A study looking at 18 to 35-year-olds have concluded that basketball... I'm going to let you know right now. There's nobody in the UK from front to back, from C to signing C that could beat me in basketball. Not one person. I'm, I'm willing to... I, I, whatever y'all want to do. <laughs> it was the second most popular sport in the UK, as on average, 14% of the UK's population play it once a week. To many Brits, it would surprise them. I'm sure they've never heard this stat before. 
but it would surprise them even more that it's as popular as netball and cricket. It would surprise them even more that it's as popular as netball. And I've been seeing this around too. Netball, what is this? What is this, like volleyball and basketball? You can travel, you can, like, this is like volleyball, basketball, and chess all in one. Like, what is this? And cricket. But those sports get more coverage. Not to mention, basketball is more popular than rugby and still gets less coverage than the barbaric gentleman sport. So if basketball is so popular, why is the British Basketball League dead? And why are they asking for a monetary bailout? And why don't we have more British NBA basketball players? We've got one issue, and that's the retention of talent. Lou Deng is a prime example of this. I'm stiff in everyday life because of basketball. So, I'm, I walk like this, I move like I move because of basketball. But on the court, oh, I'm regular. <laughs> Not stiff at all, pause. <laughs> Born in Sudan, he would migrate to the UK, and at the age of 12, he was playing for the Brixton basketball team. He would go on to represent mm -hmm. the UK at the age of 13. And at 14, he would find himself in America for the rest of his development before university at Duke, and then the NBA. Let's look at another example. Current Spurs point guard Jeremy Sohan would start basketball with the MK Trojans in Milton Keynes. Jeremy Sohan. He's not a point guard, is he? Would start basketball with the MK Trojans in Milton Keynes. Then playing in Southampton College, he would rep both the British and Polish national teams, showcasing his talents to the world. And just like that, once the world saw him, they snatched him and Britain let him go. He would play in Indiana at high school, but that would stop due to COVID. Then he went to Germany to play basketball before university at Baylor and getting drafted okay, by the So there's Spurs. a few players. Uh, and then I know don't do shoot with one hand. A name that you will not know. I wonder how many of you guys know who Cameron Hildred is. A UK basketball player who went Division One to Wait Forest and got retweeted by Kevin Durant because of this spin move. Hildreth, weaving through, spins and scores! Because of this spin move. Hildreth. Jump stop into a reverse spin. Weaving through. Shot, oh, that, is, that is tough. Spins and scores! This is the talent we are letting disappear off into the sunset. The benefits of keeping talent in the UK means there's more homegrown support and development that continues to go on in the UK. Iron sharpens iron, and if our iron keeps getting stolen, we can't sharpen our <coughs> iron. But what if we can't afford to sharpen our iron? Funding. Funding has been a huge issue since the NTL went bankrupt. After well, show American money. they were picked up by ITV, but they would soon void the contract, resulting in fans losing televised UK basketball. The issue of funding can be explained from two levels, at grassroots level and elite level. The definition of the grassroots. The ordinary people in a society or an organization. At grassroots level, 14% of the UK population find themselves playing basketball once a week. And of those individuals... Once a week, that's crazy. I know America, when I was coming up, every day, eight, nine hours a day. It's stated that 70% of those playing basketball are from a black, Asian, minority, ethnic background. True, true. Just over 90% of the population on minimum wage in the UK are of a black, Asian, minority, ethnic background. The numbers basically say that basketball caters towards that community. But those in that community can't afford to fund the sport at grassroots level. If anything, basketball in the UK relies on the funding of the elite. Basketball in Newham, East London, has been directly related to the drop in knife crime of 46%. I ain't never even seen a court in the UK. Like a basketball court, not in a TV show, not in a, a, a city nightlife walk around, nothing which shows that basketball has a positive social impact on society, making it a safer place. So why is it when they ask for a one million pound bailout, they're rejected? The elites won't say it, but I will. Maybe it's a class issue. Who are the elites? The richest, most powerful, 
best educated or best trained group in society. Whether chairman Chris Grant asked for funding, he was told that basketball does not win enough medals and that basketball was too niche of a sport. Hmm. Here we have three of the most niche <laughs> English sports in the UK. It is. What, what was, that was crazy. Here we have. I rode a horse before, pause. I just wanted to let that be. Have three of them. Kept that to myself. Most niche English sports in the UK. Sailing, which received 5.4 million. Equestrian, which received 3 million in funding. And shooting, which received. They call horseback riding an equestrian? That sounds like a like a Marvel character. Not a sport. Equestrian is crazy. 1.5 million pounds. And here we have basketball. 500,000 pounds. <laughs> Guns are banned in the UK and shooting receives more money. Is basketball more niche than owning a horse or a boat, an outdated vehicle and a non-land vehicle? Maybe I'm missing something. Could they mean a niche crowd? Potentially, but as discussed, basketball is as popular as cricket in the UK. Maybe it's the market. So it really be people out there hooping, huh? Okay, all right. I need to see like a park takeover in the UK as well. I react to it, but like, I don't believe it really. That's too soon. But when the NBA comes to the UK, not only do the tickets sell out in under an hour, That's but they true. fill up the O2 Arena, 20,000 seats. All the signs are pointing to a lack of elite support, but the elite say they don't get funding unless they win medals. But without the support, how can basketball win medals? It just doesn't make any sense to me. I wonder if this could ever be changed. In recent years, the BBL received £7 million in funding from Betting777 to own a 46% stake in the league. Could this be the spark of a potential investment pump? Not too long ago, OG Onanobi of the Toronto Raptors invested into the London Lions basketball team to become a minority stake owner. Could he transform the EuroLeague team and raise the British profile? No. Is the answer. No, he cannot. He doesn't play for a high profile enough team. Um he like no, it's just no. Could the BBL find a benefactor to revive the league or a group of investors that could help bring British basketball to the main stage? Or could we one day see Adam Silver expand? into a major European city, bringing basketball back to life with the expansion of the NBA into London. The NBA have launched junior programs and like, like, like a team? Coaching programs to help develop talent in the UK. Could this help facilitate the growth of the UK's basketball population? Help retain the talent that we already have? Time will tell. As we have established, the elite have a major role to play in all of this. And at the moment, the harsh truth is, this is all yet to happen, and British basketball has a long way to go. Thank you very much for tuning in. Please like and comment down. There's no hoopers in the UK. I stand by that. Please show me. Tag me in the video. Tell <laughs> leave a like, comment, subscribe. We'll go.